Today I wanted to talk about inflation theory. Not only is it one of the biggest lies in physics, it's also one of the biggest lies involved with the mythical Big Bang Theory. And so it's the next video in my Big Bang series that I'm currently working on. Now inflation theory was devised as a scheme to salvage the Big Bang Theory because the Big Bang Theory violates the speed of light limit because if the speed of light limit was being observed, we couldn't see anything more than 6.9 billion light years away in a 13.8 billion light year universe that starts at a point. So even then, it tells us that it can't start at a point uh, because we observe objects at more than 12 billion light years, almost 13. Uh, or perhaps over, depending on what you think of the observations. So there's still a speed of light problem, and there's still a size problem. There's also a flatness problem. The universe is geometrically flat. Based on a big bang model with, with everything starting at a point, it would be expected that space would have curvature to it under Einstein's model of space curving. And space doesn't have nearly as much curvature as they thought, which is why based on that curvature, instead of the universe being 13.8 billion light years old, it has, has to be 92 or 93 billion light years in size to explain the flatness if it starts at a point and if space curves, which already tells you there the space curvature is nonsense. And, and that's kind of where we, where we go when we look at the problem. To begin with, they falsely assume that space is physical. Under any definition of space, literary definition, it's an unbound region or boundless region that contains matter. Space by itself is not physical. And Einstein in particular said space doesn't contain ether and it doesn't contain a quantum field. So it doesn't have a physical substance under relativity, which means it's non-physical. But if it's non-physical, it can't have physical dimensions and physical clocks, which is why Einstein's physical dimensions and physical clocks are purely imaginary. They started out as a thought experiment. And they're still just a thought experiment. They're not based on anything physically real. They just imagine that space has physical dimensions and physical clocks some way that's undetermined by them. And inflation theory continues on with that, assuming that there's these imaginary physical dimensions. And they falsely assume these imaginary physical dimensions can change, physically change, and then they imagine that these, they falsely imagine that these objects of matter can go faster than the speed of light if it sort of follows along with these changing non-physical, physical dimensions. And so you should be getting understanding that the whole idea behind inflation theory is like general relativity, fictitious physics. It's not grounded in a physical reality of physical dimensions and physical clocks. Although inflation theory doesn't deal so much with the clocks as it deals with physics. It, you try to expand the universe very quickly so that you maintain uniformity in the universe and you obtain flatness by magically expanding much faster than the speed of light. So, of course this is nonsense. And in the real world, what we have is a quantum field exists in all known space. Every space we know has quantum field in it. Quantum field contains quantum fluctuations. And this is actually one of the bad things about inflation theory, is they actually do consider quantum field theory, but they don't consider 
quantum fluctuations, I guess, and they don't consider that quantum fluctuations have wavelengths and frequencies. Wavelengths and frequencies are in, we measure in meters and cycles per second, and so it has, the quantum field has physical dimensions and it has physical clock rates. Not only that, the physical dimensions and physical clock rates emerge from the quantum field. The quantum field is self-regulating and these are emergent properties. They don't come from some magical spatial dimension that comes from elves or some other magical substance that's unexplained by physics. It comes from the quantum field and comes from quantum fluctuation interactions that cause there to be wavelengths and frequencies and also energy there because the quantum fluctuations have energy. And not only that, the, because of the Casimir effect, we know that quantum fluctuations act like electric charge dipoles that interact with each other. And because we, we know that, that supports the particle pair model, such as quantum electron positron pairs, massless, of course, that fill all space. And also other pairs of particles that are real particles. Namely, the proton and antiproton. Because that gives us two different orientations of matter and antimatter, as well as electric positive and negative charges. So, we have space filled with electric charges. Which means that when space is... is when you're having an electric field form, those charges rotate. And there's resistance to rotation due to quantum Van der Waals torque that develops within the field itself. And so the electric constant permittivity emerges from quantum field theory. And also the magnetic constant permeability emerges from quantum field theory. And permittivity times permeability equals one over the speed of light. So the speed of light emerges from quantum field theory. So when you have space containing a quantum field, it automatically has a speed of light limit that applies to light, electrically charged bodies, and electrically neutral bodies. So the speed of light limit's already in place. You can't just say, oh, I'm going to violate the speed of light limit because I don't like physics. Um, that's nonsense physics, fictitious physics. The speed of light limit is a real thing, and it's a real thing wherever there's quantum field. And as far as we know, there's always a quantum field present. And as far as we know, the quantum field doesn't change dimensions. The quantum field has a distribution of wavelengths, and that distribution of wavelengths gives it its dimensions and clocks, wavelengths, frequencies, permittivity, permeability, and speed light limit. It's, it's all a package that's tied together that it doesn't change. So there is no magical changing of the dimensions of the quantum field that could be melded into inflation theory. So what happens is inflation theory is total, total nonsense. It's garbage. It always was garbage. Whenever you have a theory, come up with an idea, and you are doing tests on the theory to see if it might be viable, or a hypothesis to be more proper, and you find out that your hypothesis requires that the speed of light limit be violated for light or objects, then your hypothesis fails. That's, it just flat out fails. When, when you violate the speed of light limit, you fail. That's it. Game over. Time to come up with a new hypothesis. And so that's where we stand today. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and learned a little bit about inflation theory. I'm sure I'll talk about it more in future videos. And if you like the video, please like, share, and or subscribe. And if you want to know more about my quantum field theory research, I have a couple books for sale. And I also have a more recent book on particle theory, as I've tried to straighten out particle theory. And I appreciate if you buy a book because that supports me. I'm an independent researcher and that, that helps. 
And I also have a Patreon account if you would consider that. So thanks for watching.